Hi, this is Phil Chandler, and today I'm going to show you uh, an idea for a new hive, which I'm hoping is going to solve some of my problems, and maybe it might help solve some of yours as well. The idea of this hive is that it's um, a way of converting from small frames, specifically half Dayton frames in my case. Uh, this is one here. This is one that's got some comb on and a couple of curious bees. And I've got a bunch of bees on frames like this, and I want to put them into a bigger space. And this hive is designed to solve that particular problem, but I think it could also solve one or two other problems along the way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this hive goes together and how simple it is to build. And as you can see, the first thing you can see here is a couple of sets of legs, uh, which are made in the shape of a, an H. There are a number of ways of making these as long as they're strong. Um, it's made by um, it's made from 4x1 timber, and the, these particular pieces of timber are treated wood. Uh, but only for the legs. The floor, as you can see, is just loosely dropped in. It's just a couple of four by ones with a joining pieces at the end. So very simple. And on top of that is a piece of wire mesh, quarter inch wire mesh just dropped in. And that's going to hold the wood shavings, which I'm going to put in the floor. So the first section that goes in there is a plain, um, plain section made again from four by one timber and it fits between the legs in such a way as to drop directly onto the floor like so and as I build this hive you'll notice it more or less holds itself together. Uh, it will need I think some screws or some bolts at some stage but at the moment it actually holds itself together quite well. Now this floor section is now four inches deep with a mesh area on it and there's some airspace for the for ventilation and I'm going to put um, into it some wood shavings and I'll do that right now I think. The idea of this is that the bottom of this hive will still be able to provide ventilation for the, for the colony, but there will be no direct air coming in, so it should be a lot warmer in winter than just having a mesh floor. At the same time, this, this stuff will Attract things like uh, earwigs and wood lice, which are bees' natural companions in hollow trees. And so, what I'm trying to do is to make this hive more like a hollow tree, just giving it a bit of a more natural feel to it, as far as the bees are concerned. This uh, the wood shavings here are mostly um, Douglas fir, same as the timber for the hive itself, but. It's quite possible that one could experiment with different uh, types of wood shavings and maybe there are some that are better than others for this purpose. So here we've got a nice bit of wood shavings. Now when, when Varroa fall off the bees um, in, onto this floor, they're going to pretty much disappear into the, into the wood shavings. If we wanted to measure the drop, we would have to devise a way of lowering part of the floor so we can put in uh, a counting board, a white board. Uh, but in this particular instance, I'm keeping this really simple, so I haven't got any way of doing that right now. But I've got a design for that worked out. So now I'm just going to carry on building the hive. The next section to go in is exactly the same as the last one, except that it's got three entrance holes drilled there. And that's going to be the, um, the bees' entrance. And I've made it, obviously, one one block up as it were because this one's one that's full of uh, sawdust so the bees will now be able to come into the hive above the level of the sawdust and we simply build the hive like this these sections are very easy to make they're all four by one 
and they are just screwed together into the ends. I'm deliberately making this hive considerably deeper than the half daden frame. The half daden frame is, um, I think, just short of 12 inches. It's about 11 and 3 quarter inches from top to bottom. And so three of these boxes, because they're four inches deep, three of these will actually accommodate a half daden frame rather nicely, leaving some space at the bottom. And the final, the final section to go in there actually has a rebate on both sides. It's rebated here to take the tabs on the ends of the frame. So that will now drop in there and you can see from wh where the camera is that's going to leave a whole box free for the bees to build comb deeper than these and we're actually going to cut the bottoms of these frames off with some loppers as we put the bees in here and the bees will then be able to continue their comb making it deeper than they otherwise could. That's the, the, basic, the basic hive. On top of the frames, of, of, um, when, when the frames are in the hive, um, we're going to put a couple of other boxes. That's these two here. Those are made in exactly the same way and they're made exactly half. They're made that two of them are um, make, a, make exactly the same length as one of those long boxes. And they will sit on top of the hive like that. And you, as you can see, these have also got a mesh floors and there will be wood shavings in these as well. So the bees will have insulation above them as well as ventilation below. Okay, now then. The other thing you can do with this hive is that we can have an extra stack of, uh, of frames on top of it, or top bars in fact. We can effectively um, super it, or, or, or more likely that we can put um, part of the colony on a vertical stack above this one. And you notice that these small boxes are all rebated as, as the top one of the long box was so that they will also accept half dadent frames. So now we can make a stack like that. I've lost my frame. There's a frame with nothing in it. And that frame will then fit in there. So now we've got um, we've got eight frames across this way in this box. And we've got um, probably 17 across that way because I say more than 16, more than double because there's a two-inch section in the middle here which covers those two middle frames. So 17 or possibly 18 frames in that one. So that's it. And then of course on top of this stack we could also put um, the box with the mesh floor. So we could run the hive something like that. Um, this could also be a way of introducing a colony to the hive. This, this box here could take um, a colony on half day into a small top bars and that could sit directly on top of this box and they could work their way downwards into the main chamber. Another thing you can do with this design is that it is deliberately made to fit um, onto warre boxes so that the warre box will, will sit directly on top of this unit uh, with, a, with an overhang each side so that if you wanted to put uh, a warre box on top or this on top of a warre you'd have to block this section here with a small strip of wood but that's very easy to do. So it becomes a very comprehensive and very easy to build hive. Um, as yet untested, it has to be said, um, but we're going to test it today by putting some bees in it and see how they get on. This hive here has a colony inside it that's been there all winter and it's on two rows of half daden frames uh, arranged side by side with a divider between them but there's a gap under the divider so it's all one colony but just they're, they're arranged um, in a not terribly efficient manner as far as the bees are concerned. So what we're going to do is we're going to take them out of here and put them into our new hive. So the first thing we're going to do is to move this hive a few feet over here 
so that the bees are returning to the same spot that they normally return to, but they're now going to find a new hive in its place. So that's the first thing we'll do, we'll just move this hive out of the way. So we've got the hive in place, we've leveled it up. The entrance is over here, which is where the bees are used to finding an entrance. And they're just hovering around here thinking that this hive has suddenly changed its appearance quite dramatically. But as soon as we get some bees in here and it starts to smell right for them, they'll be coming back in through the entrances. So now we're just going to take the super off this hive. Right, so now we've got a, a colony in here, as you can see, with arranged in two rows of half dadens. The, most of the bees seem to be over this side, so these are the frames that I'm going to put in that box first. And I'm going to keep them in the same order that they came out. I'm just going to put my net on. I'm just going to use a, a gentle water spray just to calm them down if they need to be calmed down, but they seem quite, uh, quite okay at the moment. These frames are quite a tight fit. I'm being very gentle with this first one so as not to roll bees over each other too much. There's a bit of honey on that one, so I'll give them a little bit of food to eat. seem to be doing much with, with the frames that side, so I'm going to take that one out so it doesn't get jammed. They're already building, trying to build comb on the bottom of this frame. stores. When are we going to snip them? Um, I'm just thinking about that actually. Um, <coughs> I may not because not they're, they're not best pleased with me interfering with them mm. and I think that might be just one bit of disturbance too far. They can build comb on the bottom of these frames anyway. Yeah. So I'm, I think I might just leave them be as time through. They are starting to um, get a little bit stingy, so I'm, I'm just going to put a little bit more clothes, clothing on so I don't get too many stings. I've just put my jacket on because they were getting a little bit stingy. Of course, the best time to put protective clothing on is before you start, and that's what I should have done, really. There's lots of sealed brood here, quite a lot of drone brood. 
on this one. But I'm quite happy for them to build drones. In fact, this, this comb is, this is a half frame that, in here and the, the lower half of it is all drone. And the top half has um, got some worker brood on it. And it, so they've just been allowed to build free comb on this section. And now they'll have even more opportunity to build free comb when, once they're in this hive. Flying bees are now beginning to find the entrance. It won't take them long to adapt to this new way of arranging things. The extra depth of this box should give the bees a better opportunity to arrange their hive um, in what we perhaps consider to be a more natural way, which is to have more of a vertical drop than they might otherwise get in a, an ordinary framed hive. And we'll see how they deal with that space. I imagine what they'll do is uh, build longer combs, but of course bees may have their own ideas. Again, this comb here, is just, this is just a half frame, and most of the, um, oh no, actually that's all worker down there, there's worker brood, and here's the queen, here's the queen right there. Always nice to see the queen. This one is just a top bar, in fact. Um, there's no frame on this at all, so they've just built that comb directly off the top bar. You can see they have put attachments to the side here and there, just to add extra support. But it does show that you can have quite a deep top bar hive and still be able to remove combs from it if you need to. brood on this one. These bees were a little stingy at first but they seem to have got used to the idea that they're moving now and um, they're behaving themselves quite nicely. Considering their home is being massively disrupted, they're behaving very well. I'm just looking for um, an extra comb that I can put. That will do. They've just started building on, uh, they've just started storing honey in that one, but they could continue to build that comb now. And the reason I'm doing this is because the next comb in the box that's going to come out in a moment is absolutely full of honey. I think we've had a, a, a mouse nesting in the bottom, in fact we have. I had a, a mouse nesting in the bottom of this uh, hive. If you look in there, you will either see a mouse or the remains of a mouse, or that perhaps it's va vacated by now. But there's definitely traces of a mouse having been in there. In fact, his 
nibbled away the bottom of that the bottom bar of that um, frame as well. So I'm going to take advantage of that and just snip off the um, snip off the bottom bars of this frame. Now go in the in the hive like that, and they can continue to build that comb as they please. This is the last comb. This is solid honey from this hive here. And I'm going to put this one right at the end. nearly at the end. Close up the spacing a little bit and we've got another cone. It's a black old comb. I'm going to get rid of the, the darker comb at the bottom of this. This is, oh, this is as you can see, this is wired foundation this is on. I'm going to pull those wires out because we have no use for them in this hive. I'm breaking off this bit of comb here. The bees can rebuild it very easily. This is, this is rather old comb, so it's probably best gotten rid of. Just to fill that gap. Okay. There's a bit of slack at the end, which is ideal um, because I want to put a, uh, a follower board in there at once at some stage, so that we've got some way of getting in there without disturbing the frames too much. Now we've got a lot of bees in this box, so we need to get them out of this box and into their new home. So, is our mouse vacated? I think he probably has, yeah. Very nice in there. So now we're going to try and get bees out of this box. Turn the box over here. They'll get the message and they'll find their own way out into the new hive. Each of these small boxes has a rebate cut into the sides here to take the half dadent frames. But I'm going to, with the aid of my water spray, I'm just going to get these bees off the top so that I can safely put this box over them. Now I can build a tower with three of these boxes. Like that. Just line them up a bit. And now I can put these combs that I've taken out of the hive. They can go back in. Above the bees because there's exactly a bee space at the bottom of the frame. Just 
tidying these up a bit so they pack together properly. off this frame as well. So these small boxes take exactly eight of these half laden frames. And now they've, they've effectively got, well you could regard it as a super, but the, this, is, this is where bees can now store honey above them should they choose to do so. Now this side we're going to cover up with a, another box with um, some sawdust in it. doing that we're going to put a cloth on top of the bees so that they don't glue this directly to the bees. So we've got the bees into the box now, we've got them in a, a little extra tower here so we've accommodated all the frames that were in the original box and they've got now got uh, an extra four inches of space at least to build vertically should they choose to do so. And so what I'm going to do now is just close them up and I'm just going to a bit of gentle water spraying and I'm putting over the top of them a piece of untreated hessian sacking as a permeable barrier between the bees and the insulation boxes that I'm about to put on top of them. I just want to get these guys off the, the tops because we're going to be putting the box over them. Squash bees. What a damp looking bees there. I'll have to move. Pick bees up by their wings, they generally don't retaliate. specimens on here, I want to get those off. And girls. And then this box goes on top, this box has a nylon mesh floor. If we were to put this box directly on top of the bees, they, they would fill these holes with propolis and then glue the whole thing together, which would make it virtually impossible to remove. So by putting a cloth in between, we've ensured that next time we want to come along and check them, we can lift this box off and then peel the hessian away carefully and the bees will not be injured in the process. In order to get a roof on this hive, a single roof, we're going to have to level these up. So what I'm going to do is simply put some more of these boxes on this side, on the low side, so the whole thing is level and now I can put the roof on 
a level surface. This space here, of course, could be used as storage space for your tools, for your hat, for anything else that you happen to need while you're beekeeping. This lid wasn't specifically made for this hive, but it's good enough to keep the rain off them. It's quite heavy, so it's not going to blow off anything. And there it is. It's a pagoda hive, isn't it? Perhaps we should call it the pagoda hive. <laughs>